This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at absolute and percentage uncertainties. We'll start by looking at the uncertainty of digital apparatus. The absolute uncertainty of digital apparatus, such as a mass balance, is plus or minus the smallest scale division. This mass balance can measure to two decimal places. Therefore, the absolute uncertainty of the mass balance is plus or minus 0.01 grams. The mass of the white powder, which is calcium carbonate, plus the weighing paper, can be written as 16.43 plus or minus 0.01 grams. As we can see, the number of decimal places in the uncertainty should equal the number of decimal places in the recorded measurement. Next, we'll calculate the percentage uncertainty. To calculate the percentage uncertainty, you divide the absolute uncertainty of the mass balance by the recorded measurement and then multiply by 100. This gives us a percentage uncertainty of 0.06%. In this example, the percentage uncertainty is written to one significant figure. In our next example, we have a mass balance that can measure to four decimal places. Therefore, the absolute uncertainty of the mass balance is plus or minus 0.0001 grams. So the mass of the empty beaker is recorded as 149.2101 plus or minus 0.0001 grams. To calculate the percentage uncertainty, we divide the absolute uncertainty of the mass balance by the recorded measurement multiplied by 100. This gives us a percentage uncertainty of 7 times 10 to the negative 5%. Next we look at the uncertainty of analog apparatus. The absolute uncertainty of analog apparatus is plus or minus half the smallest scale division. The smallest scale division on this measuring cylinder is 1 cm cubed. Therefore, the absolute uncertainty of the measuring cylinder is half the smaller scale division, which is plus or minus 0.5 cm cubed. So the volume of water in the measuring cylinder can be recorded as 43.0 plus or minus 0.5 centimeters cubed. And if we calculate the percentage uncertainty, we divide the absolute uncertainty of the measuring cylinder by the recorded measurement and then we multiply by 100. This gives us a percentage uncertainty of 1%. In our last example, we look at the absolute uncertainty for a burette. A burette measures to two decimal places with the last digit being either a 0 or a 5. The absolute uncertainty of a burette is plus or minus 0.05 cm cubed. Here we have a table of results from an acid-base titration. So in this table we have the initial volume of sodium hydroxide, we have the final volume of sodium hydroxide and we have the total volume of sodium hydroxide. The initial and final volume of sodium hydroxide both have an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0.05 cm3. The total volume of sodium hydroxide has an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0.10 cm3. Because the burette is read twice, once for the initial and once for the final volumes, we add these uncertainties together to get the uncertainty for the total volume. So in this acid-base titration, four trials were conducted and the total volume of sodium hydroxide was calculated for each trial. The color change with phenolphthalein indicator was also recorded for each trial. So to calculate the average volume of sodium hydroxide used in the titration, the values from trial 3 and trial 4 were used. This is because they produced the lightest pink color change with the phenolphthalein indicator. So to calculate the average, we add the two values together, then divide by 2. This gives us 10.88 plus or minus 0.10 centimeters cubed. In this example, you can see that the value of the uncertainty for the average volume of sodium hydroxide is the same as for the total volume of sodium hydroxide. And finally, we'll calculate the percentage uncertainty. So we divide the absolute uncertainty by the average volume of sodium hydroxide used, multiply it by 100, and that gives us a percentage uncertainty of 0.9%.